Hello, this is Kathleen McKee of Olene's.com Machine Embroidery Art. Lesson 27 Passing and the Running Stitch. In Lesson 24, one of my viewers pointed out that I did not fully explain how to send out the runners or the feed uh, feeder lines to be covered up with the manual punch. Uh, stitches. So I'm going to try to explain that to you in a short little design. We're going to pick up a graphic. We'll go to our image tab and we're going to open up an image and I'm not going to get it from my scanner down or Twain device. I'm going to get it from a file. I'm going to get this simple little ribbon and uh, I'm going to open it and let's get it big enough where you can see what I'm doing. I might have to make this smaller. Let's see how long this uh, satin stitch is going to be by getting it. Well, as, as you see when you look down in the lower left hand corner, the widest part of the stitch is about 11. So that's going to be too long, but we can always shrink this later. I just want you to have this big enough so you can see what I'm doing. So, um, let me get so we have the image and we're going to go to our manual punch. Now on the manual punch you've got your straight block which is the shortcut on that on the keyboard is going to be Z so you don't have to keep going back and forth. Uh, the curved block is the shortcut X and as I said I don't use the uh, semi-automatic too much but that's a shortcut C. That the main running or feeder, feeder stitch I use is the running stitch and that's the shortcut V. So l let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to start with the running stitch. Uh, even though, uh, and since you see in this design, this is on top of this. So we have to start down here so that when we come around, uh, this will be on top of the other stitch. So I'm going to start with my running stitch and the reason why I do that is so that when the machine starts uh, it will have time to pick up that stitch. I know it's going to be covered up so I'm not worried about it. So now that I have my uh, running stitch there I'm going to uh, use, well I'll use, I'll start out with the straight block tool. So that uh, end of the running stitch will be our top. Remember I told you I like to say top, bottom, top, bottom so I keep myself in place. I don't lose place. So that was the first. That's the bottom. That will be the top, the bottom, top, the bottom. And we don't need to put stitches here. We can and, and have the other stitch run over it, but we don't really need them and we're all about trying to save uh, time on our machine. So I'm going to go back to the running stitch or shortcut V on your keyboard if you don't want to go keep going back and forth. And I'm going to run it up to the next point. Then I'm going to go back and this time I'm going to pull the curve stitch or curve block. And that would be the first one when I turn it to the curve that's automatically our first stitch. And so that would be bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Now I'm going to go back to the running stitch again so I can position where I want my next, the, the start of my next uh, manual punch or block stitches. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go back to the curve block and that was my top. So this is the bottom. And I'm going to go top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Then I'm going to go back to the running stitch and I'm going to just run it down and then run it back up here to get in position for my next one. So I'm going to click it here. That's my top and I'm going to pull the uh, curve manual punch. So the second one's going to be my bottom, top, 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 and then I'm going to double click and that completes my, my run. 
so you can see how you have a, a more three-dimensional look than if you were going to try to use the um, uh, the outline or fill tool and then draw your line around. But we do want that line on the outside so I'm going to show you how we pass that. We're going to have to get our zoom tool get a little close on this. And I think I'm going to choose a black outline so I can see it better against that. And once again I'm going to start with my running stitch so that it gets uh, uh, gives the machine a chance to pick up the stitch and I know it's going to get buried. So I'm going to start here with my first or my top stitch then I'm going to go to let's see what we'll use it doesn't matter if you use curved or straight when you're doing one this small so I'll just use straight. So that was my top, this is my bottom. Top, bottom, top bottom. Well, I better use the curve. I'm going to go back up to curve and change that to curve. Now you can always change uh, your manual punch from a curved path to a straight or a straight to a curve by right clicking on the point. I'll show you that after I finish this. Okay. So I'm at the top of this. So what I'm going to do next, let's uh, get the zoom tool. And I think I'm going to, okay, I'll just start from there. I'll go back to my straight. And you notice by going to your uh, zoom tool, it's not going to take away anything from your design uh, as far as having to pick up your tool again. It leaves you right where you start, right where you left off. Okay, um, I'm going to go back to a running stitch because I want to make sure I know where my top stitch is. Okay, I'm going to start my top stitch there. I'm going to go to the curve and that was my top, so that's my bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, let's move it over a little bit, top, bottom, top, bottom, okay, and I'm trying, uh, and I'm trying to show you some pathing, this is, um, because we don't want the machine ever to stop, so at this point, I think I'm going to go back to my running stitch, and I'm going to run it here and I'm going to have to pick it up here around here so that's going to be my right, to undo a stitch of course uh, you probably already figured this out that you have to right click to undo the last stitch you put in so I'm going to put my uh, Top button. That's going to be my first stitch. I'm going to go over to the curve, and that's going to be my second stitch. Bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Now I'm going to go back to my running stitch, and cover. And I'm going to cover up this running stitch we uh, made to get there. And I'll put it right here. Go back to my curve. That's the top one. The bottom top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top. I'm going to double click here just so you can see what we have so far. So, so far we have the outline uh, that comes up here and, uh, and so far the machine's not going to stop. We haven't, the running stitch is going to connect everything together. Now, as long as you uh, start your next stitch from where you left off and it's within two millimeters, uh, your machine will not put in a jump stitch there unless you've set your software to something different. So we're going to pick up right where we left off. Let me zoom up. And we're going to cover up that running stitch we made to get here with a, another curve manual punch. 
So I'm going to start it right here because I believe it doesn't matter if this is still less than two millimeters, so I can start anywhere here. And I'm going to go top, bottom, top, bottom, top. I'm going to left right click and undo that one. I didn't like where it was placed. Bottom, and then I'm going to end up top bottom. Now I'm kind of in a predicament. I want this to blend together so I'm going to go back to a running stitch and make sure I've got this straight. So I'm going to put one click there, go to my curve and make that the bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. You notice with the curve block tool it does what they call a bezier curve and I'll show you about how uh, you can change the angles of that curve after we finish this design. Okay so now I'm down here I have to send out another running stitch which will be covered up when we come back with our manual punch. So I'm going to run that from there to here where we left off and that's going to I'm going to start my top here Go to the curve, top, bottom, and we can take it all the way to, all the way to here, top, bottom. Now I'm going to go back to the running and take it up to here so I can join it with this. That's going to be my top. I'll go over to the curve, manual punch, that's going to be my bottom. You'll see with a little bit of practice, you'll be uh, and you figure out where where your top and bottom is, so you don't uh, lose your place. Because it is easy to lose your place. Uh, that you'll get very good at it quickly. I'm going to go back to a running stitch so I can put my position, and that's going to be the top. And then I'm going to go back to the curve, and that will be my bottom. Let's get it out a little bit so you can see what we're doing. And we'll go back to the curve. Okay. Top, bottom. Okay, here's top, bottom, top, bottom. I'm going to right click and undo that. I don't like that. Top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. I'm going to see now bottom and we can go right up to here top bottom okay so now let's take a look at it in realistic preview and you see now we have this all outlined with the uh, and we've covered and the machine's never going to stop when it sews this out it's going to sew it out without the machine ever having to stop or jump and that's what we mean by perfect pathing is when your machine never has to stop but can sew the whole design uh, without any jump stitches just by sending out your your feed or your running stitch and sometimes you'll notice when you uh, look at it in different views you might not be happy with the uh, the way some of the stitches look and you can always change Let's put this back in stitches. Let's zoom it a little bit. And we'll look over here, for instance. I don't like the way that looks. So you can always go to your edit tool and you can move these stitches around. Now remember I told you about you can change, like if I wanted that to be a, uh, a straight stitch, I can right click on it and it will say to straight. And that makes it well, that makes it worse. So I'm going to right click it again and make it to curve. So sometimes you can't see them. I'm going to see if I no, you can't see it there. There's these little gizmos that every curved. See, you, you can change it. You can change the amount of curve. You can change it by making them pulling them in shorter. It tightens up the curve a little bit. So you can play around with that too. Um, like right here, I'm not crazy. That's a little bit too thin, so I'm going to pull that out some. And I'm not real crazy about how these uh, curves are, so you can get your little uh, 
knobs on them and make them uh, a, a bigger curve or a lesser curve. And uh, you'll notice also that the, the larger or the, the bigger space between uh, your points, the longer these uh, little handles are. So that's essentially uh, in a nutshell about how you connect your passing because we do want our machines to run smoothly.